It certainly is about food security. People's first and foremost concerns here, politically, socially, and spiritually, is subsistence. And subsistence isn't merely hunting and fishing. It's about a life way that ties the essence of who we are as a people to the land. so rich in resources out there. Part of the reason we're here today is our forefathers established themselves in this area knowing all the resources that they can survive on. And that main thought is still there, like they go out and harvest a particular time of the year, for instance, once. Got some blubber right here for seed oil. Uruk is processed during the springtime. What we're actually doing is preparing food for the winter. People are very active throughout the spring, summer, and fall. Those are the seasons to be engaged in harvesting and gathering. And many of the people in every single one of our villages are engaged in those activities. The belly part of the caribou dry, Eskimo word for dry, panikuk. Mooses on the list if we happen to come across one. But this time of the year, it's primarily caribou. If we can get at least four caribou, that will bring us through until we can go hunt with snow machine. Primarily for me and my wife and our two children, we'll be sure to share some of that with extended family, aunts that are widowed, and my parents in Anchorage. September they hang lots of salmon, the eggs inside, and you hang them and they eat them and they good to eat. Big white fish with eggs in it, salmon with eggs in them, we call amachat, that we eat to, during, the, during the winter. We go sailing up river two, three weeks, put them away by the thousands. I would hunt all winter long for seal out here in the ocean. And we'd have to take a snow machine out there, hunt them along the edge, shoot them, kayak out there and get them and bring them in. The liver, the intestines, the meat, the blubber especially. And we make the seal oil out of the blubber. We cut the blubber into small strips, render it for about seven days. The blubber renders into oil and uh, we eat the oil all winter long. We use a lot of seal oil in the winter because that's what keeps us warm. We dip our frozen meat, our dried meat, frozen fish, and all kinds of other stuff, and even vegetables, and um, dip it into oil and eat it that way. Um, this one seal here will make about five gallons. We do it right behind our couch. It's warm enough. You have to stir the oil every day. We do it in little five-gallon buckets, put a cover on it, The ice fishing is usually about March, April, and part of May. Hopefully sometimes smelt, but it's mostly herring here in Kotzebue. And we gather bird eggs. The most popular one is the seagull eggs. A lot of families rely on that. That point out here, we get what we call crowbill, or Arctic lure. Gorilla eggs, seagull eggs, geese, crane, brant. We hunt ugruk, bearded seal. That's the most important meat that we have. We get them from out here mostly, from right here mm -hmm. in the springtime. And this is a small one, but it's a bearded seal. We do the fishing while our husbands go hunting for, for them they could catch down the ice, put our nets out and catch lots of white fish and hang them. Here we are in the middle of summer. Commercial fishing is in full swing. Most commercial fishermen here are from Kotzebue, but there's a good number of them from the outlying villages that come into Kotzebue during the summer months to fish for chum salmon. 
hunt a lot of birds on these flats. Look all these mallards. Good eating ducks. Women picking berries their last time around before snow falls. I do spend uh, part of my summer gathering plants. I mean, I start with the tundra tea, one of the first things that starts blooming or growing. And then I also get the sourdough, or we call it kohak in Inupiaq. Gather and then we boil and mix in the berries. And the berries too have their seasons. We start with the salmon berry, then the blueberry, Later it's the blackberry and the cranberry. I like mixing my berries because you get different vitamins out of them. We never buy jam. Just taste what that put away we make jam out of them and uh Do you buy any of your meat from the store? No. No. At least seventy percent of what I consume comes out of the land. If you are serving dinner on the table, you have chicken on this side and probably a duck on this side. I'll stay on the duck side. I'd say I eat at least 80% from what I get off the land. I mean, just seldom eat anything out of the store. I mean, other than uh, turkey once in a while, Thanksgiving and... I'd rather live off the land than going over to the store and buy a $20, $30 in a roast or something, you know, because that's pretty expensive. I use a lot of fish, so it's uh, I don't buy any fish at, in stores. We're relying less and less on the foods that are shipped in and purchased and using more of the things that we could gather on our own. We have a lot of hunters in our community and we basically prefer caribou meat. I have to have my caribou, just like I have to have my sea mammals, you know. Uh, I go out every spring and hunt uh, out there yet. I do that, every, do that all my life, I still do it. So I get my supply of seal oil and, uh, and seal meat. 65% is from the land and the rest from the store, you know. Um, we eat a lot of our own food we hunt, and uh, we're caribou hunters. We, hunt, we live off the caribou. Mostly we get what we hunt and fish. Those are the main food we have. When we have money to buy groceries, like something different from our fish and meat, we buy. In the back valley we have out here is sharing. These are white fish. People up north, they get lots of fish, lots of dried meat. And down here we get seals and we, and we trade, you know. We trade with those people over there. Where I was born and raised over at Sulwick, they don't get salmon at all. Lucky, lucky if they get one, maybe. Um, I share these, I'll share these with them. This one is from Savunga. Whale meat or walrus meat. These are herring eggs from Shaktulik. Sometimes they don't have what we got. They have what we don't have and we trade. Goose and uh, fish. Our son-in-law and our daughter, they sent seal oil with mipcock, that black meat from the seal, rendered out the fat. And sometimes I send them some sea fish and then, then they, they send us that walrus that they call a truck. You don't expect anything back, you just share. When they go out fishing springtime, they'll get them a sled load at a time with those that can't get it or don't have the transportation to get it. And they'll call on VHF, anybody want fish? They'll drop them off right in your yards. People care for each other, they share. That's how our people are. When they run out of food, people chip in, like every family would donate food from each house. I work for Manilak Association for the Elders Traditional Foods Program. This program is designed to keep our native foods on our elders' table who can't provide for themselves anymore. A lot of young guys don't want to stay home. They want to go out and hunt and do law. Uh, hunting for the elders. Sometimes my friends and nieces bring us a whole caribou, sometimes three or four. 
I don't have to go out and hunt. All I have to do is spin it in bushes. All the villages throughout uh, the Bandilak service area is involved with this program as far as the hunter support. How it operates in the lower 48 is the Meals on Wheels. Up here, it's different. We couldn't go to the market and buy beef and chicken and provide our elders with that because they were not accustomed to that type of food. Grey baluga. My husband you like to eat like this. Rather than going to the market to buy the Western diet, it got switched over to hunter support, which is gasoline, motor oil, and ammunition for the able-bodied hunters, gatherers, fishers to go out and harvest for our elders. Where this program really kicks in is two main hunting events, spring ogre hunting and fall caribou hunting. We have my grandson that hunt our tank, so I never went out without caribou or trout, harvest seal. Ribbon seal or... We're in a changing time. We do want to maintain a subsistence lifestyle, but it takes cash to be able to do it. There are no economics in those communities. Very few jobs. Money is hard to come by if there's no economy to pay for the gas that you need in order to get out into the field to harvest the kinds of animals and the fish and the plants and the berries. We don't use the traditional dog team anymore, although I did do that in my younger years. And nowadays we have the airplanes and snow machines and boats with bigger motors. So as a native person, I feel like we're progressive, like everybody else. If some things work better now for us, that save us time and we should use them. There's a need to collect baseline data, to know where we are so we know what we need to protect and how to protect for those things. <laughs> Here at the borough, we just recently started to undertake research and science. We have a subsistence mapping project, cataloging and interviewing people from seven out of the 11 communities, mapping family areas, inventorying what those places were used for, the types of fish and game harvesting that they would get from those areas. It feels good to know that we're doing something for our people that is so critically important, and, and that's our lands, protected for our way of life. And with a subsistence mapping program at the borough, we wanted to record all of the animals, plants, and place names of our people. An ideal place to go ugru hunting. Look for GPS number and I'll find 187 someplace in here. Set my GPS. By recording the many, many people that have walked and harvested from the lands and the oceans so that we have a record that belong to us. Stay away about 10, 10 days to two weeks until they get a load of caribou to bring home to their families because there's been times when other people are doing surveys, how many caribou they're getting or how many different species of ducks they're getting. And sometimes that information might either be used against us or it's taken away from us and it's not anything that we have access to because it does not belong to us. So with a subsistence mapping program in conjunction with other funding agencies, we wanted to take the lead and make sure it's something that we can use in our schools. Place name and uh, any back name. Also, keep the language and the culture and the history alive. We wanted to make sure that we stay in control of what happens to our lands. So we thought it was critically important to make sure that we could walk hand in hand with resource development while making sure our lands are protected to serve its purpose as being the grocery store of our people.